All right, let's do this. Cool. Uh, right, automated testing made easy with Cypress IO. All right, let's start with me. This is me. I'm Sam. This is me. Uh, this is how I look on a holiday. That was last week in Portugal. Time of my life. Needed some sun. Uh, you can always follow me on these. Whoa. You can always follow me on these links. Uh, I'm not a very social person on social media, but you can always try to contact me if you like. I work for Smart Pension, pension and we are hiring uh, much better conditions than... No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> right, what is Cyprus? Um, first thing I thought when I heard of it, Cyprus Hill, right? Can't go wrong there. Or is it an island somewhere in Washington? Yes, there is an island in Washington called Cyprus, and it's not the Greek-like island. No. What is Cyprus? Cyprus Isle. These slides are going way fast. And I cool. Uh, Cyprus is a, uh, uh, is a testing tool entirely written in JavaScript, and which helps developers with automated tests for the web. Um, it's often compared to Selenium, which is uh, very, very different. Cool. Um, I have worked with automated testing tools before, um, with a Cucumber test suite written in uh, Ruby with the Selenium web driver. Um, and I had a whole bunch of problems with this before in, in the past. Um, I'm pretty sure that you guys, that most of you people already uh, heard of, um, of Selenium and most of you probably have worked with it as well. Um, there were always a whole bunch of problems. Setting it up is hard, um, whether your test is slow, uh, the test suite um, doesn't have a knowledge of states. Um, just to recap, just to recap, <laughs> testing is just too hard. Now, um, many people have, have had the same problems that I have. M many people um, have had these issues. And so did Brian Mann. This is Brian Mann, just to make sure this is Brian Mann. Um, he took, a, took it upon himself to fix this problem um, uh, because he, he, he had most of these problems that many other developers had. So he actually went to the community and he asked the question to uh, the community of developers. What are the biggest testing challenges you want to, to have solved? And he actually sent it out into the world and he got a lot of replies. Must be easy to use, tooling that is fast, testing across browser is painful, and so on, and so on, and so on. Right, now thousands and thousands of messages came back and this is obviously a massive problem to solve. You cannot just solve it overnight. Um, the first problem that we see here is Selenium. Selenium is a tool which was, um, was first released in 2004, so it's quite an old tool. Um, it has been going through some uh, optimizations over the years. Um, and eventually it turned out into WebDriver. Um, now, we have this tool, yet still a lot of people struggle with this. So, the first thing that we need to think about is web evolution. The web is uh, change evolving all the time. Old web applications were uh, stateless. Um, we had full page reloads. Now, in the old days, that was fine. Um, that, was, that was okay. The second thing is, it used to be all synchronous. The old applications in the old days, that was fine, and everything used to be synchronous. And for these applications, Selenium was fine. Now, nowadays, the applications um, use most asynchronous code. Almost everything now is asynchronous. And our browser keeps a whole bunch of states. And the fact remains is, that, well, first of all, 
for stateless, stateless code and synchronous code, Selenium is absolutely fine. You can, you can use Selenium without any problems. Now, um, Selenium is a, is a stateless HTTP API. So that means once we are using states, we are just lost. And this is basically impossible to test a, state, uh, a st uh, stateful uh, application with a stateless machine. You cannot, you cannot do that. There are many hacks uh, and you can try to solve it, but it's basically kind of unfixable. Now, another problem is speed. Selenium is slow. No comments. That's just a fact. That's a given fact. And then my favorite of all, debugging. I was completely stunned. Now, just so everybody's aware, I am not a QA. I have some experience with Selenium, but I'm, I was never really involved. So I didn't really go through all of these pains that much, but I heard them all around me. Now, this is quite amazing. This was, for me, the top. So the uh, um, Chrome is going to be automated by the Chrome driver. Now, the Chrome driver uses the same debugger, uh, uh, uses the debugger protocol. Now, your dev tools use the same debugger protocol, so uh, the debugger HTTP protocol. So that means if you run your test in Selenium, you cannot have your uh, dev tools open. I mean, how can you write uh, your tests, run your test, and, and figure out where things go wrong if you cannot have the debugger open? That just blew my mind. bit slow, but we'll get there. Right, uh, solve all, all solving all these problems is not an easy task, but Brian Mann took it upon himself to leave Selenium aside and build a fully new thing from the ground up. And he wanted this to be, uh, to be able to work with uh, the modern application. So for two and a half years, he has been working really, really hard. And then after two and a half years, he just, did, he just did what he wanted to do. He created Cypress IO. Right, this was the whole speech talk. I am pretty sure that everybody wants to see what it is rather than know the history. So let's have a quick look. Let's see if this works. Of course, that's not gonna work. Okay, cool. So you just go into your application. You just yarn uh, at uh, Cypress to your dev, or you can use uh, npm install. And this will install the software for you. And if you look in the folder structure, it only adds your node modules, a package.json, and your yarn.log file. Just simple application. Now. Now we have this application, we can run Yarn. Yarn has a special command to run. Now I'm a lazy developer, so I uh, mimicked the command. Anyway, I think I have to go press play here. When you run the application, when you run Yarn, which is in your node modules, bin Cypress open, it will actually take control of your computer and open some kind of software. And as you can see, it has a whole bunch of files in there. Now, when I opened it, it actually created a whole bunch of files for me. So now if I go to look, at, look again in the directory, oops. now I can see uh, there is a Cypress folder with fixtures, integration, plugin, support, and a whole bunch of tests. When I opened it the initial time, now when I was making this presentation, I had to do it a few times to record the video and this only pops up once. So I had to do it on a different machine to get the, the, uh, uh, the thing. But it, it actually tells you it's gonna create a whole bunch of st uh, stuff for you. When you click okay, it just generates those files, that's it. It's actually pretty interesting because what it actually is, the integration test, the example is actions, aliasing, assertions, all this kind of stuff, and I was wondering what it actually is. So basically, it helps you to um, uh, to get started. Ooh. That was too fast. Okay, let's try this again. Cool structure. Better. Cool. 
So the default test in action. When you run the default tests, it's actually running tests on the Cypress IO website and just uh, asserting a whole bunch of functionality on that actual website. And I'll give you a quick example of this. So I just aliased the uh, open command. There is opening the UI. And if you click on one of the tests, I click on the actions test, it will run, will open a browser, and will actually run the test for you. So these tests are actually going to go to the actions, to the actual URL, and go, it's going to do a whole bunch of assertion for you. And it's actually going through the actual live website from Cypress, which is pretty amazing. Cool. So this was my first uh, experience with Cypress. Now I'm going to do a quick sales speech, uh, not really a sales speech, but on the Cypress IO website, there is a really cool video that I just want to show you what the capaci capacity of Cypress can actually do. Now, also, I do not get paid at all for this speech. I just think it's an amazing tool and I just want other people to know about this tool. So let's have a look. This is the actual website, and I hope we can get some sound. Cypress is an open source test runner built for the modern web. It makes setup, writing, running, and recording tests much simpler, easier, and faster than ever before. Whether you're testing the various login states of your application, or complex drag and drop operations that you've seen on web apps and Trello boards. You can easily wait for dynamic content to load or make sure things look good on mobile responsive views. With Cypress, you have much more control over your application and can write tests in a way that was not possible before today. You can programmatically control UI widgets like tree views and multi-selects as well as waiting for the results of an autocomplete to finish. You can even stub out network requests to control how the responses are returned. This means you can easily test edge cases, such as when no results are returned, or test what happens if your server is down. As you write commands, Cypress executes them in real time, providing you with visual feedback as they run. Commands are interactive, so as we hover over them, Cypress time travels back to the application state when this command ran. When clicking on a command, we receive helpful debugging output to our console, and based on the type of command, can oftentimes interact with them. There's so much more that Cypress can do, so we hope that you'll check out our docs and getting started <laughs> videos. We'll explain how to install, write your first tests, and go into much more detail about how Cypress is different from any other testing tool you've ever seen before. Right, so that was a sales speech. I just think it's an amazing tool. Now, that was my impression, is it? But now the question is, is it really that awesome? Yeah, I went too fast, but yes, it is. <laughs> it is actually amazing. Uh, when I first saw this, um, this software popping up, I actually sneaked it into our code base without anybody knowing and made it available to a few people. Uh, now we have a new um, engineering manager who is a bit annoyed that this got into the code base <laughs> because people like it a lot and people are like, oh, can we please use it? Can we use it? Um, obviously, we have this massive repository and we do automatic deployment. So that also means once we run our tests or once you add tests to your repository, you're potentially doing deployment. Now, with Cypress, that's not, not needed. So what I did this week, literally this week, I created a new repository, moved all the tests to a different repository, and anybody can write tests wherever they want, because this is not inside your application. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. Now, um, what I like the most about uh, Cypress 
is that it's completely written in JavaScript. I don't have to learn a new language. I know JavaScript already. Plus, it's, it's very self-explanatory and it's using tools that we already know. So Cypress um, uh, bundles the popular chai assertions, as you can see here. So we have BDD assertions, um, expect name not to, uh, to not equal Jane, very simple. We have TDD assertion, assert is okay, everything, everything is okay. There, are the, there is the uh, uh, chai jQuery plugin, which comes by default. And we have the Synon Chai as well. On top of that, Chai allows you to, uh, to customize it. So you can write your own uh, testing uh, ways uh, inside there. It's just extremely easy. Right, so I have, um, in a previous talk, created a static page, uh, it was uh, a static uh, blog. Uh, and obviously it's an Ember meetup, so I wanted to at least have something about Ember to talk to. So what I've done is I have taken that, uh, that PR and I actually integrated uh, my uh, uh, Cypress and I created some tests. And I just, just want to show you these tests running and just a quick explanation what we are doing there. So this is my Ember static site. I'm just going to run Ember. So in this case, I need to start my server because I'm going to uh, test them on my local host, which is absolutely fine. You could potentially uh, swap it out for a real URL. Um, as you saw in the video, it will just uh, load it from there. In the meantime, I'm going to open Cypress. My laptop is running on full power because of the recording, I think. Right, so here we go. We have the Ember static site. And I created a happy path spec. This will open my browser. We'll visit my URL. and it will do a whole bunch of assertions on my static blog. Yeah, so the streaming is a bit slow, I think. But basically what it's doing is it's clicking on certain buttons, asserting if all the elements in the page have to be, uh, are there. Um, if not, uh, it will give us an error. And this is the last one to contact me. It will fill in the form. This is, by the way, not my real telephone number. <laughs> there are also a few, I mean, this tool is amazing. This tool is so big, you can do so many things with it. Um, you can have a slow, slow typing, you can do a copy paste, you can speed it up as much as you want, you can have the real behavior, uh, so you can test your debouncers, all of this kind of stuff is there as well. So what I like the most about this, this software is, what you guys did not see in the beginning, uh, so it's still running for the last test, not show snapshot while running test. So what you can do is you can go back in time at this point and it takes snapshots of everything it done. And you can see where what happened and you can open your debugger, you can open your console, you can see everything what, what's happening there. My computer I think is frying up. So this is normally going much faster <laughs> and better. <coughs> question from the audience? Any questions? Yeah. yeah. Does it work with library like so you're on like the, the Ember server there? So if you're like trying to fix a bug in your other window, mm -hmm. it library loads and you like then restart the test? Yes. So you can restart the test on uh, just here. Uh, sorry, here. Um, so the page will fail because I did not implement uh, a callback for my form. So I just want to show you as well. If the test fail, it will tell you exactly where it failed and how it failed. Um, 
the reload works there. Uh, this is also connected up with live reload. So if I am writing my test, if I change anything in my test file, it will automatically reload the test suite as well. You can run tests uh, step by step. Um, now, the most amazing part is that you can actually go back and see what it's doing. And what you probably have not noticed is at some point, I tested the responsiveness of this thing. So I visit the URL and I change the viewport and I do a whole bunch of assertions on that viewport. Um, I'm basically looking for the menu bar here. So this tool is, is so big, it's fast, it's easy to use, it runs on most every machine. It has its own built-in CLI. Um, it has its own uh, hosting service. And most of all, best of all, it's completely free. It's open source. So if you want to download this and write all your tests yourself, you can run it locally. You can run it on your own server. You can run it basically on any CI, or you can use the uh, CI from, um, uh, from Cypress themselves. They host it for you. They have a whole platform. You can run tests there. And that's where the pricing comes in. So you, you can pay for it. If you're, if you're really interested in, and you really want to host this completely following the, their rules, you can do that. Otherwise, you can just run it locally. Right, going back. Cool, so if you want to see some resources, I stole most of this talk from a video I saw on YouTube. I'm not gonna lie about that. Uh, but hey, at least uh, now you guys know about it. So yeah, do check this out. Uh, I'm not saying that Selenium is the worst thing in the world, but do uh, have a look out for this software. So thank you very much, and we are still hiring. <coughs>